Hi, I'm Carol Cook, and today, along with David Cataford, we're going to talk about career planning and goal setting. For this workshop, you should have a handout with two sections. One has some detail and goes over what we'll talk about today. We've left some space on the first page for you to write down notes and respond to any activities in the workshop. Okay, so the learning objectives of this workshop are basically three. Understanding the career planning process, setting some maps goals, and we'll, we'll talk about that more in, in detail later on, and then creating an action plan. What does career mean to you? Our definition is a field or pursuit of progressive achievement in an area. This can include your education, your hobbies, your community or extracurricular service, in addition to your work life. David, what does it mean to you? Career means to me, um, I want you know, to, you to enjoy going to your job and then at the end of the day, enjoy going home. I, I, I think career success is you want your job to support the life you choose to live. So take a moment and jot down what career means to you. A further definition is career planning. This is defined as an intentional process of conceptualizing, exploring, and finding a satisfying career. This is a really effective career planning process model. This model provides you with an overview of the career planning process. It is a fluid dynamic and, and that's why we show it as a circle. This process applies to making initial decisions about what to study all the way through to conducting a job search. Based on this process, where do you feel you are? An example of how this has applied to students in the past has been someone with an awareness of their skills and abilities and they choose to explore something new in their summer job. So for instance, um, they decided that they wanted office experience this year, whether it was reception work or anything else, they wanted to gain some office experience. So they get to the point, they've explored those possibilities, made that decision, and they act on applying for and securing a summer position. At the end of that term, they have a different level of personal awareness about what worked for them and what didn't, both in the environment as well as the tasks that they were doing over the summer. Where you want to start with this process is personal awareness. The great question at the beginning, who am I? What do I want to achieve in my life? Effective personal awareness is the core foundation of effective career planning. It is important to revisit this and see what your experiences teach you and how things might evolve or change going forward. VISTA is explored in greater detail in the Personal Awareness and Self-Assessment Workshop, so please attend that. Either online or in person. I think one of the keys is you have to know yourself. Have you ever thought about what your values are? This table provides an example of some common values. You may be able to think of some less common ones or ones that are unique to you. So refer to your handout now and take a moment and reflect on your values. What are they? Record a few. And if you're struggling, look at the choices that you make in your life. How do you spend your time and energy? Okay, so once you have completed a thorough and thoughtful uh, personal awareness, it's time to move on to, to the exploring. The work you did in the personal awareness stage allows you to create a short list of criteria that you can use to filter information on programs and careers. Keep in mind that there is more than one right choice. Most successful people will have more than one career in their lifetime. Personally, I'm on my fourth career. Exploring your options include what careers, majors, or jobs will be a good fit for you and what other options do you see for yourself. Exploration can happen at home, on the computer, or in person, with people. Ask questions. How to conduct occupational research and what resources are available are further explored in the Exploring Career Options Workshop. 
We invite you to reflect now on the question you see in this slide. It's important to remember that personal awareness and exploration are key. But while planning your career with intention, it's helpful to be open to possibility. But remember what David said earlier about being open to those unplanned events as well. So what would you do if you could not fail? David, what comes to mind for you? I think, wow, that's a, it's a great question. I think for me, I, I, I love baseball, so I would like to be a, but I don't want to be a player, maybe a baseball manager. Cool. Be creative with this, have fun with the process, and discuss it with your friends and family. You can start to see patterns or connections sometimes about what is going to matter to you most in a job. Next in our model, we have to move along to decision making. Once, once you have connected with who you are and you've explored the options out there, we have to process this information and make sense of it. There are many different styles of decision making, just as there are many different types of personalities. This is an important place to reflect on some of the pressures and motivations we have in our life and who influences our decisions. Whose expectations are you trying to meet? Take a moment now and reflect on a recent decision that you made. You can choose anything, whether you were deciding to go on a trip, buy a pair of shoes, or try out for a team or an activity. How did you make this decision? You didn't just make it. You obviously thought about it. What did you do? There are many ways to make decisions. In this workshop, we are highlighting three strategies. The most important thing is to pick a strategy that works for you. The rational method can include evaluation of your self-assessment data and your exploration or pros and cons. These are intellectual processes. In contrast, many people also value intuition, making decisions based on instincts and what feels right. What's your gut telling you? And I think your gut, your instincts, is better when you're young. The next slide provides an example of pros and cons, and you may also want to check out another resource guide, a book by Spencer Johnson called Yes or No, A Guide to Making Better Decisions, is a simple little fable about a hike and presents you with three questions for your head and three questions for your heart. And this is an example of a rational method for decision making that can be seen on this slide. The table includes potential gains to yourself and others and the potential challenges to yourself and others. This table can be used to narrow down choices, see the full impact on yourself and those around you, and this can be applied again and again throughout your career. So planning and acting are the last stages of the career planning process, and we can begin this stage by looking at the goals that we set or plans that we're making. So take a moment now and identify one short-term goal. This is something you will set out to accomplish in a relatively short time frame, let's say no longer than three months from now. Take a moment and record this goal in your handout. How we set goals determines how successful we will be in achieving them. Very often we find students that do not have well-written or effective goals. There are many formulas for how to set effective goals. You may have heard of SMART goals, but we like MAPS. MAPS is another formula that allows individuals to construct and realize their career goals. So what the model suggests is that goals need to be measurable. For instance, I'm going to apply to three jobs this week. Are they achievable? They need to be realistic enough that they're possible for you to achieve and positive in their aspect. Positive. These things will not adversely affect another key area of your life. And also, a tip is to think of positive in the wording. So rather than saying that you won't do something, use wording in a positive frame that you will do something or what you can take action around. Lastly, specific. Exactly what is it that you want to achieve or accomplish and by when. This model can be used for short-term or long-term goals. On this slide, we have two examples 
of a goal a student had. These are both great goals to get into grad school. The first example, however, is ineffective. In the second example, you can see that it's worded in a positive frame. It's specific, it's got a time frame, it is possible, and it's quantified. Take some time here to revise the short-term goal that you jotted down a few moments ago. Rephrase that and turn it into a MAPS goal. Once you have a goal set that is measurable, achievable, positive and specific, we need a plan. An action plan breaks down the goal into smaller steps and allows you to work backwards from where you want to be to where you are today. These need to be concrete steps and each one is assigned to a timeline. Reflect on your short-term goal. Create an action plan. Let's review the next slide for a great example of an effective action plan. Please look at the example on this slide. Now take a moment to start or complete your action plan based on the short-term goal you wrote down a few minutes ago. Let's review what we've been discussing today. We'll put David on the spot with some true-false questions. People will typically have more than one career over their lifetime. That's true. You bet. We're both sitting here with three and four careers apiece and open to new opportunities. How about the majority of students have well-written goals? That's true. Actually not. You would think with students in specific programs and degrees that they would, but most have not taken the time to sit down and have clear intention in writing goals to help them move forward. Successful career decisions include elements of VISTA. That's true. Yes, we explore this further in the Personal Awareness and Self-Assessment Workshop, which you can do online or in person. MAPS is a formula for effective goal setting. That's true. Yes, there are many other models out there. One is SMART goals. Just find one that works for you. Lastly, finding a satisfying career is often a matter of planning and luck. That's true. And that goes with the John Crumbold's rule of luck is no accident. Thank you for participating today. We hope you found this helpful and interesting. One of the great things about being young and being a student at university is you have the power to explore your career options. It's an amazing time in your life to so take advantage and really explore your options. Bye for now.